Right, we're now on air. Good, Good evening. evening. <laughs> that was in yeah, stereo. Unison. In unison. <laughs> so this week we are at home with the Fishers with Chris and Nicola Fisher and our special guest, Good. Andy. AH Bespoke. How you doing, man? <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Great, great to have you. Yeah, great to have you with us on this uh, warm and uh, somewhat clammy uh, Monday evening. Yeah. So, uh, so this is episode 16. So um, let me just say hello to everybody um, who's on the live chat. So hello to everyone who's watching. Um, hi to T plus G making. Good evening, guys. Knotted Pumpkin. Hi. Wayne Bigfoot Woodcraft. Hi, Wayne. Christine and Michael Hessel time. Hello. Great to have you all with us. Bonjour. So, without further ado, yes, let's go to Andy. So it's really great to have you here, and we've just been chatting for um, the sort of the pre-call, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, just yeah, just uh, just sort of like chewing the fat, as you might say, off, yeah. off air. Uh, so I've found out a few things about Andy. Um, Andy has a fine art degree um he describes himself as an artist a maker and a wood turner um he's having a bit of a, a new chapter in his life which we'll have a chat about um but he's going in some new directions but still maker related um and he is a new dad to Jacob, who's five weeks old. Hey, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. Woo. That's amazing. No, thank you. <laughs> I didn't really do anything. That was the wife. <laughs> well, 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 well done to the missus anyway. So, uh, yeah. well, you've got some sleepless nights though. So, yeah, very much so. He's, um, yeah, he's a, a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Five weeks. But yeah, no, he's, He's gorgeous. Yeah. You can't not love him. So oh, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. It's all good. Cool. Cool. So um, let's just see. Uh, Steve Twydell. Um, Hi, Steve. He says, ah, it's a mad Viking. Mm. Uh, Wayne the Woods Turner. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Wayne. So, Hi, Wayne. <laughs> Andy. Um, so let's yeah. start with the first question. Why do you make? I make because it's in my genes. Um, I've, since I was a kid, I've always made stuff from Lego and bits and pieces like that. So um, as you get older, Lego turns into wood and then you get big tools and then you get even bigger tools and then wood comes into other things and then you start picking up other bits and pieces. So um i guess art or making um has always kind of been there mm -hmm. um it's something i've always done um this is what draw. i find so interesting about makers because and i say this every week you all say very similar things and this whole maker thing has been with a lot of you from being very young and I find that quite yeah. fascinating. Yeah, I will. I think um can't speak for anybody else, obviously, but mine, I guess my direction comes from my dad. My dad has, is a maker, although doesn't do it as much as what he would like, I don't think, but mm. um, he's always been handy with stuff. He's so that's something that he's passed on. I've always seen him doing that. Um, so now I'm doing it to my boys. Yeah. Luke's already doing the wood turning and he's way better than I am at wood turning. <laughs> um, and as soon as Jacob can hold a hammer, he'll be out on the anvil. So, yeah. Uh, I guess, I guess because I had that kind of parentage, yeah. that was, where I sort of went and being naturally away with the fairies, the creative thing sort of comes with it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So um, what, what about the fine art? You said you did a fine art degree. Yeah. Do you still um, use some of that in the work you're doing now? Or have you just um, gone in a completely different direction? I'd like to think it has no bearing on what I do, but everything that I've done previously is of, is going to have an obvious effect on what I do now. Mm -hmm. I I didn't do what you would class as standard art. I didn't do painting. I didn't do drawing or anything like that. I did more sort of performance based, mm -hmm. all right, and um, film and that kind of stuff. So. I didn't fly. Sorry, <laughs> um, I didn't. I didn't um, really sort of do that sort of stuff. That wasn't my my thing. Um, now, obviously, that has helped me doing the YouTube, for example, yeah, yeah. and Instagram because I'm a lot more aware of camera than say somebody who hasn't i can do art stuff a lot of what i did at sixth form and doing my a levels and uh, my foundation course is stuff that a lot of makers do now mm. photography yeah um it's all stuff that i've picked up and all stuff is that's added to the bank of knowledge that um i use in whatever i do i guess mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sense. I noticed you were making um, a Viking longboat cart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds really interesting. <laughs> <Epic> well. <laughs> um, well, I made, I started making um, a proper, it, I was making it like Vikings made boats, yeah. but as a cart. Um, now we in our previous house um I, I made it a bit too big um so i couldn't actually get it out of the door <laughs> so engrossed in making this cot um and yes it's got to be this certain size for him i didn't actually consider i actually had to get it up to the bedroom mm -hmm. at that point then I did was it was suggested to me uh, when I was on Makers International that I should probably consider, um, well, just before Makers International, I should probably consider like maybe cutting it in half. The second I did that, I lost interest in it mm. because it was like, oh, I've, I've done all of that work, and the one thing that I've you're always taught to do measure twice, measure twice, cut once. Yeah. Mm. And I just didn't do it. I did, the most basic of lessons, I just got so engrossed in doing what I was doing that, um, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> put that to one side. Um, and um, the wife was getting a little bit, you really need to make this cart. I was like, okay, yeah. So um, we went for a cot bed instead. So in instead of a proper actual boat shape, mm. um, it's more of a, a bed shape. Mm. Um, it still looks like a, a long boat. Mm. Um, it's got a little sail at the back as well, and mm. little shields on the front. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I think the best thing about all of that was that my dad actually said that I had done a brilliant job and that was... Oh, that's nice. When he says that, I know that I actually have done a good job. So, yeah. yeah. Um, that was kind of nice. So, yeah. pleased so, with that. Tell, yeah. tell, tell us about <laughs> the Viking connection then. Um, it's more of an obsession. Um, I have traced my lineage as we were saying before mm -hmm. um and it's northern frank um so north um the northman yeah um 1066 people um mm. but i uh, honestly i'm not sure if there is um i haven't done the the uh the test like you guys have mm. um but 
I have to say now you've said it, I'm probably actually going to. It's, um, not, it's not that dear. I think it's about sixty pounds or something like that. It's come down yeah. a lot in price as well now. And you know, it's not like you do a swab and or well, you wow. activate it. You have to register and activate it online first, and then Charlie did his swab. Yeah, uh, and then. Uh, you, you put it in your vial and you post it off and then you know it's takes yeah. time for the results to come through uh but uh yeah that when he rang me and said the results are here and he said you know we're you know uh we're danish descent it was like i knew it but yes get in there <laughs> you know but uh yeah it, but it's super interesting because you know we we have that we had the overall majority of danish blood uh, we've got some yeah. Irish because my maternal relatives are from Roscommon in Ireland. So we have on on, uh, on my mum's side, we've got the Irish element, but we had little little bits in uh, Switzerland and Italy. It's fascinating, mm -hmm. it really is. And so, uh, yeah, I hope and I hope uh, and many blessings that if you do do it, you come back as Scandinavian. But it's still very interesting. Uh, well. I'd be I'll be happy wherever. It'd just be interesting to know where 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 the lineage comes from. Yeah. Um, and and, but, uh, it, and really, really, if it comes back that you've got this uh, nice little Scandinavian uh, line back, that would be just like icing on the cake. Yeah, you, you, icing could, on the cake. Could, you could lock me up and chuck away the key after that, man. That's like I was. <laughs> I was good. I'm done now. I'm out of here. I want to do that. Where's my sword? I'm off to Valhalla. And that was it. I was like, whoa. So, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I'd recommend doing it. Yeah, yeah cool. I'm going to get on that. I'll get on that. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. So, um, obviously, you were at Maker Central this year, as were many of us. Yes. Um, what what has the maker community given you what what do you get out of being involved in that community the the best thing that you get out of sorry stupid flies <laughs> um the best thing that the maker community gives is friendship plain and simple um meeting people like yourselves uh steve dave the wood barber yeah um uh, Richard, Brain Fizz, Kat, I mean, even um, Al, Brett, and um, the guys from Fools with Tools are not just people that are famous, if you like, but um, there's the makers that um, simply ornate. Um, I speak to him almost daily, and um, it's nice to get the face. You know, the FaceTime yeah. rather than yeah, yeah. that's great. And we are so lucky the age that we live in where we can communicate like this. But it's you kind of miss out on the personal contact mm. um, when people there's such distances between us all. Um, but, yeah, I think the friendship is the best thing that I've got out of uh, the maker community because yeah, so many awesome people like so many awesome people yeah. yeah when jacob was born i within two weeks three weeks we had must have had eight or nine parcels oh. random things for jacob from makers that to be fair a few of them i have met but some of them i haven't even met they follow me on instagram and heard that i was having a baby and oh. sent me stuff Oh. It's not about them sending me stuff. That's not. It's the fact that they've thought Andy would like this yeah. for his son, and that just yeah. make a central blew my mind. It was just, <laughs> it was the most awesome time that I, I I I still struggle to put it into words because I it was my first year, so yeah. Um, and at the time I still was still having dizzy spells so I was kind of a little bit awkward anyway because meeting all these people and feeling the way that I was it was quite um, 
bizarre, but mm. fun at the same time, like awesome at the same time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, meeting people like Leona, Leona Faye. Yeah, she's in the chat, yeah. You n will never see her on camera, but to actually <laughs> meet her in real life and to get the most massive hug was just yeah. brilliant. That I mean, you can't you can't put a price on that at all. Yeah. Um, and thanks to Nick and um, all, not just Nick, because it takes a whole ton of people to organise something like that. But that was just fantastic, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It was it was a, a, an epic event, and uh, it's yeah, the friendship it'd, it'd be probably the thing that, apart from you know uh, you uh, for whatever reason being told that you couldn't make anything ever again, I think the friendship would probably be the the most upsetting thing to go without. Mm. You know. Uh, yeah. That 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 sense of community and family and friendship that we've all got, and you know, it's 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 a big community and it's a big place, and of course, you'd love to get to meet more people more often. But we've all got busy lives. You do more than most at the minute, but uh, yeah, it's nice. Like you say, you're getting your packages from people that you've never met, and it, it's like, you know, you you may never hear from them again, but each time it does happen it's a really special feeling so yeah and there's that uh there's that saying i think strangers are just friends you haven't met yet mm. so mm. uh yeah there's so many many people i'd love to hang out with everyone all together at the same time you know we should have a make it island <laughs> you know maybe oh, better love island oh gosh yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Maker Island. I well, I think um, what we need to have is um, a, a, another event like Maker Central, but instead of having all the stuff, having like just talking to people and something where you can network, I mm. think that would be really nice. Sort of like a, 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 a more chilled, informal hangout, yeah. 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 Where this? Yeah. Where this? Yeah. Go on, Andy. Sorry, man. Joe Whitaker was um, had an idea, didn't he, with about the Make Fest? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, and a few other people. Obviously, Steve Twidell's doing his one in Ireland. Yeah. Um, make a make a meter. Yeah. Um, and there's the Yandles Fair as well. Mm -hmm. Um. September, yeah. um, which would be cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there there are still events going on. It's just I think because Maker Central was is publicised to us so massively, mm -hmm. we kind of forget the other sort of smaller ones. And yeah. I guess now Joe's floated the idea. Other people are going to start um, coming up with their own ideas and. That can only be a good thing. Yeah. Um, like a Glastonbury type festival <laughs> for makers. I mean, that would be, I'd be there like a shot. Yeah. Um, maybe not the wife or the boys, but um, I'd be there. Um, <laughs> Should we get a me tent going? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be Most so definitely. I'm crazy. We can be sat in there with our axes. <laughs> You know, well, we do axe throwing, Chris. I'm up for axe throwing axe if you are. Throwing, blind axe throwing whilst absolutely clattered on mead. <laughs> now, that's worth that it. Awesome. Well, we, you nearly had a go, didn't you, at axe throwing? We, we went to Woodfest in North Wales a couple yeah. of weekends ago, mm. and they had axe throwing there. But it's one of those, you know, the day runs away with you. We were talking to people, and by the time we were sort of ready to move on. It, it was all closing anyway. Mm. So, um, yeah, but I, I think we need to organise some blind axe throwing. Yeah. But anyway, that would be legendary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to go back to Make Essential, you mentioned that you'd been struggling with dizziness. Um, yeah. And that's led you to have a change of direction and a bit yeah. of a new chapter in your life. Yeah, so 
basically um a couple of uh, i think it was about february sort of time the dizziness started mm. it's about three months three and a half months or so that i was suffering with dizziness on a regular basis Fly. um and um it it kind of destroyed my work life i couldn't go to work um obviously my, the company needed to uh, replace me um i was told at the time that this was something that i would have to live with potentially for the rest of my life um and obviously with that in mind the company and i parted ways turns out after the tests were actually done that um i just had um quite a serious um labyrinthitis they call it mm. um so ultimately not that serious never going to happen again most likely um but through a massive spanner in the works as in for my work um as it happens i was quite fortunate that um well, I say fortunate. It's never fortunate, but I, I was in. I acquired some inheritance, mm. um, and that's kind of helped me in my new direction. Um, unfortunately, my aunt passed away, um, and as a monument tribute, whatever you'd like to call it, I guess, um, I knew she would want me to do some sort of something to better myself so mm. um I, I signed up to do a welding course um which is the complete learn to do weld yeah um never held uh, a welder in my life before so all my eggs in one basket mm. as i said um so yeah um that's where i'm off to um as we speak um it's an online course so for the majority um, so I'm doing the online learning part now and then the practical side I have to go to Watford um, and do uh, the practical there so it's mm -hmm. um, great yeah it's it's the step forward that I needed to make for the family and as I said to you before it's as a as a woodworker I do the wood turn and I do wood work i can make wood structures i can wood there would be no point in me learning to do uh to be a chippy for example mm -hmm. um so i was getting into blacksmithing welding seemed mm -hmm. like the most logical way forward um and what it can add to my making is a whole new thing so mm -hmm. I've gone from being able to burn my work to being actively advised to burn my work. So, um, <laughs> bonus, we like fire. Um, He's a Viking. Fire good. <laughs> mm. Well, it's good for so many things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, that's, that's where I'm going at the moment. Sorry about the flies. <laughs> So what sort of things do you think you want to do when when you sort of acquire some of these new skills? Have you got any thoughts about the type of projects you're going to work on? Style. What style? <laughs> oh, it's going to be it's, it, the Viking style is going to stay. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be. Um, well, I was thinking kind of keep the Viking thing, but make it more metal. Um, so like um i guess perhaps i'd make a a small welded uh long boat or something i guess would mm -hmm. be my first starting point yeah yeah um i'd like to forge swords and things like that yeah um but welding well where where can you go with that you can i could pretty much do whatever i could come up with in my head if i've got the metal that's it that's that'll be made yeah, yeah. and it'll be uh, great to have that the story of you 
going on this new journey as well it's a great story to share on youtube and instagram and mm. i think it's well, going to be fascinating i kind of in, like that side of instagram certainly i'm not i don't use youtube as much as what i probably should or could mm. um I prefer Instagram in the sense that I don't necessarily have to have the hours and hours of editing. Yeah. Um, because when you're doing things like, I made an anvil out of rail track and the amount of grinding, no one wants to sit there and watch you grind mm -hmm. for the majority of the project. They want to see nice quick cuts and stuff like that. Well, when you're grinding something like that, you don't want to stop. Mm -hmm. Because if you stop, you, you, cut, you, you lose your flow, you, you make a mess, mm. the cut's not straight or something like that. So mm. it's just Instagram is a little bit more instant. Yeah. Uh, so when I do my course, there will be, I will be doing my course going like this with my Instagram. <laughs> going, this is what I'm doing today, guys. Oh, look, I've messed it up again. Um, That'll but that kind cool, of thing. Yeah. That'll be really cool. Yeah. Um. So. So at the moment, what sort of things do you love to make? Viking shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Props. I love making props at the moment. Mm. Um. So, wooden swords. I'm, I've made a load of wooden swords um i've started playing around with hdpe mm -hmm. um melting plastic and making yeah. various things mm -hmm. i don't know if you've seen my anvil that i made the other day um no no it's um hold on <laughs> Get it. Is, this, is this your workshop okay. thing, by the way is yes, this is my workshop. Well, and Andy, could I could I have could I trouble you for your finest audio description now, please, for the blind? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's what I was going to do. Um, so this is probably based on about twenty, uh, maybe a thirteen pound anvil. So not a massive anvil. So yeah. maybe twenty five centimeters in length. It has a horn on it. Yeah, got that. Um, yeah which is green black and white hdpe funky um and it goes into a blue black and white solid block which is about the same sort of size as half a brick yeah um it's got a small base onto it and then it's got like the hammer and surface which is about the size of an envelope and about two and a half centimeters thick right okay yeah yeah size for yeah. pummeling stuff yeah. you get some work going on that so can you use well, that well yes i can um i was going to use it for copper uh, molding copper yeah. and very thin sheet metals yeah because it's very forgiving although it's hard it's it obviously is still dense when you whack it with something sharp so mm -hmm. um but the advantage of this you just heat it up and you can flatten it off again it's, yeah yeah it's, it's brilliant stuff great idea <laughs> and i've made a load of hammers as well so uh, like round hammers and essentially blacksmith's hammers yeah. but out of plastic um so yeah i'm enjoying the um hdpe bits and pieces at the moment that sounds really cool yeah so it's how, so easy, it's easy. It's... how do you make it because i know i've got that pen haven't i That's... well what it is you ha get uh, the plastic milk cartons and now it's the the symbol is it, it, it'll have sort of like the recycling triangle and it'll have the yep. number in yeah uh, i forget what number it is now for to, that designates hdpe but basically the plastic milk cartons with the tops you get plastic mm -hmm. snip as many as you can up into small pieces uh soften them up in your oven conventional oven right uh, and then you can shape them or you push them into a mold uh, and sh let the mold shape them and when it cools 
Uh, I've not done it myself, but that's right, Andy, isn't it? Just roughly. 100% right, Chris, 100%. So that's, um, that's sort of like uh, uh, HDP moulding yeah, in, in your own workshop or kitchen. Mm. Yeah, the wife didn't like me doing it in the kitchen, so I've got my own oven in the workshop. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, well, these little, these little uh, sort of like microwave-sized ovens yeah. are perfect for the workshop, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's less than 20 quid at Argos. And oh, Christmas is coming. <laughs> Nicola, 17 Nicola, Nicola, can I blind you? I'll send you the product code. <laughs> um, but it's, I mean, it's brilliant. For what I, for what I do, it's, it was a no-brainer. Plus, we had so many baby bottles. It was, you pay four pounds, well, it's five pounds for four bottles. Well, Jacob was going for it uh, until we changed to powder. He was going through eight bottles in the space of two days. Mm. Yeah. Like, I'm not getting anything back from this other yeah. than a baby screaming at me. Yeah. Thanks. So. Um, I wanted to get at least something back from the four bottles, so yeah, they went straight into the into the uh, oven. That's great. It is. Yeah. Um. So you you meant give it a go. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> With supervision. Now, now, look, now look what you started. Yeah, and the, the blind HDP. <laughs> Give it a go, man. Give it I'm a go. It's, it's hot, so that would be the only thing that I would say. It's yeah. it, it is really hot. Yeah, I'd just watch. I'd wear I'd wear some gloves. Yeah, uh, you can wear your gauntlets, can't you? Your welding gauntlets. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I wear. I I bought a special pair for them mm. for doing HDPE because I get so much plastic all over and you know, mm. wrecks my welding gloves. So right, that's I got a separate. Pair. Yeah, yeah, get a cheap. One, yeah. One, uh, yeah, yeah. A second pair, yeah. Yeah, Steve Twydell says the amount of plastic in the world is scary. Good to make stuff from it rather than feed dolphins with it. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. Good point. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You'd be surprised how much isn't and how much can't be recycled. It's yeah. it's disgusting. It really yeah. is disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. It. All these carrier bags, you know, they, they they can't be recycled, can they? Just normal carrier bags, really. You know, it's just yeah, got to, yeah, it's keeping stuff out of landfill and the oceans and making anvils mm. out of it mm. and props. And just people yeah. that use it for pen making, it's just genius. Yeah, it really is. Yes, again, blessings to the maker community for coming up with all of this stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Um, Andy, tell us something that the maker community doesn't know about you. See, this, I've been thinking about this one. This was the only question I was like, hmm. Mm. See, I'm quite open. I, I, or I like to think I'm quite open about stuff. So I don't tend to have stuff that you guys don't know. If I think it's funny, I'll <laughs> tell you, even if it's at my cost. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of something. Um, the only thing I could think of was that I was brought up in an old people's home. Um, <laughs> but my parents were wardens at um, uh, an old people's home. So for the first seven, eight years of my life, I was brought up with um, the old um, infirm and a few people with disabilities. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there you go. Well, no, that's <laughs> not that before that is a first, what? yeah, yeah. It must have been it's quite a, interesting as a yeah. young boy, though. Um, um there must be yes, some characters this, in you. that's where the Lego thing came from, you see, because the older people used to give every birthday, I would end up with oh, I thought you were gonna say making hips and knees. Lego. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally <laughs> enough. <laughs> But the um, they the older people they were interesting yes but it was I think um, one of the the chaps that was there Kelvin um, he really challenged my perception on what is possible mm. um, I forget what it's called and bear with I I, I don't want to be offensive but he didn't have he only had 
um, like hands on his shoulders and oh, feet on his right. Thank you, thank you. And um, he used to drive. Uh, yeah. Um, he had his car was completely converted and all that kind of stuff, and it was just it blew my mind. Then the possibilities of what is possible. Mm. Um, even more so when I caught him bench pressing in his bedroom. Um, <laughs> just was insane um but then obviously uh yeah that's that's that yeah that's mm -mm. probably what i don't think i've said that to anybody before um <laughs> oh, that's so that's something new. <laughs> we get all the good stuff don't we that is just brilliant <laughs> i mean yeah for, for lots of different reasons that to grow up in you know uh, an old people's home you know, times of great joy, uh, times of sadness, there'd be times of curiosity. I, I think, you know, it will have given you uh, a great appreciation uh, yeah. uh, for people and the spirit of people and also an appreciation for all people that are so uh, often cast aside and forgotten about when they get, you know, mm -hmm. to that old dithering and it's wrong yeah it is wrong yeah i um there's one thing that gives me great joy and that is making people smile and making people laugh mm. yeah i do that in a day and i've been struggling to do it recently because of baby and tiredness and all that kind of stuff but mm. um if i can do that in a day i've done a good day's job and regardless of whether i've taken money home or not yeah mm. That's a good day's work. I, I've done a good day's work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you, mentioned, yeah. you mentioned as well that you've got a connection with HMS Victory, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, my One of my ancestors was the shipwright for HMS Victory, mm. um, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, I didn't find this information out this was my older of my two sisters um she went to portsmouth to hms victory she took the picture standing in front going um of uh it came i can't remember the first name but heel and um said ship ship right next to it so um yeah served with um nelson himself so wow. all right yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. don't get any bigger than that no, in naval history, does it? That's amazing. <laughs> Whoa. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, well. So have you got anything else you'd like to ask? Uh yeah, so when when you when you're uh you get your, your qualification in welding and fabrication and all that sort of stuff, uh mm -hmm. uh I would I would just uh, like to just not ask you a question but just please 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 i'm going to plead with you please do plenty of viking slash medieval stuff uh and, oh. and uh let, let me feel uh as much of it as i can uh we'll have to arrange that out so it's not a question it's a request when you get to uh doing your wood and metal creations and you're gonna still do a lot of your viking stuff uh can, can I please uh, come and have a grow? <laughs> <laughs> More than welcome, Thank sir. You very much. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. No, I've, no, I've not got any questions. Thoroughly, thoroughly. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant guest again. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, what the heck? Well, we've just got, we've got uh, one question from SK Crafts. When was the last time you shaved? Um, it's before I met my, my wife, so six years ago now, but it's been different. It's not been continuous growth. I have trimmed it. Mm. Um, but yeah, probably about six years that I've had a beard now. Yeah. She told me she'd divorce me if I ever cut it off, so it's staying. <laughs> She's well, a keeper, so um, I, 
I prefer Chris with the beard. I mean, obviously, he's just trimmed it today, but yeah. that's about as short as you go now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got, I mean, <laughs> I've got, I've just trimmed it down to number one today. I've cut my hair today uh, and I've just uh, trimmed my beard down, but I won't, I won't cut it again now for a few months. So, yeah, I, I like facial hair. Uh, yeah. But most of the Danes were very vain. So, uh so keep keep your beard uh in in good order it's, so uh the, the the veins contrary to popular delete belief <laughs> i think you break yeah the Dane, the danes, the danes we're talking about vikings contrary to popular belief the danes were very vain the veins oh, yeah. well, the danes were very vain that's not it right the danes the danes were very vain Oh, they were a very clean people as well. Yes, like, mm. yes. So uh, beards are plenty, but well groomed. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I'm not so well groomed, but I'm certainly um, bearded. <laughs> and it, to be fair, I did straighten it before I came on. So well, there you go. That's we'll take that. We can tell. Yeah, yeah, we can tell. Yeah, I can. But I think we're straight, straight, straight lines. We straight like lines, straight lines, straight lines, and. Uh, have you ever uh, have you got have you got any uh, plaits in it or beads? Have you ever done that? Oh no 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 no! <laughs> that would be like putting horns on my helmet. That was only um. That's yeah. They didn't do that. No 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 no. It's the uh, the the horns. It's a Victorian myth. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Um, Steve Twydell says, "Will there be a Clockwork Orange version of this interview later? Which <laughs> I think means something to you, I believe." <laughs> oh, I did. Um, I did a series on YouTube, um, which was because I was being dizzy. Uh, I was told to do these exercises, so I didn't do the exercises he suggested i did my own and um basically involved me singing along and all this kind of stuff to various music tracks and being the drummer obviously you can't put on standard speed tracks so i sp sped up all the tracks so if you listen to them it sounds like the chipmunks all singing right. <laughs> with ran, with me randomly throwing in the occasional line or something like that um i found it quite funny and quite a few other people found it quite funny um but it got to the point where it was i was doing maybe three or four a day mm -hmm. and um i thought perhaps i should stop it was like having mm -hmm. too much coffee in a day uh I was getting a bit like, well, I could do this. I could do this. Oh, oh. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, I needed to stop. So um, I, I probably will pick it up again at some point. Yeah. Because uh, I did enjoy doing it. But <laughs> you should check it out. It's funny. I will do. I, think I will do. do. Um, Steve says, would Andy recommend folk to consider changing their career from his past experience? Um, honestly, it's quite daunting um, because you, I am literally putting all my eggs into one basket. The money that I have got isn't going to last forever. In fact, it's not going to last um, till Christmas. So um, I need to be getting on with it as soon as possible. It's a needs must situation. Yeah. Um, fortunately, the way the course works, when I qualify the first module, I'll be qualified in um, oxycetylene, so I can go and get a job doing skip making or something like that. Mm. Um, and then as I do the next module, the module after that, then I can progress into harder types of welding or different types of welding. Um, and then obviously the job will get better as I get more qualified. Mm. Yeah. Um, I haven't got anywhere to go as yet, mm. as in company to work for. So 
I really am putting all my eggs into one basket. Yeah. But I am so um, focused. But yeah, and pig headed <laughs> would be probably the way my mum would describe it. Um, yeah. I'm doing this, this is what I'm doing, and I will do it. Yeah. Uh, that's my biggest character flaw, to be fair. <laughs> but um, that that's just, I need to be focused. I need to do this, not just for me personally, but for my family, because mm -hmm. assuming I can get a job doing welding afterwards, it's going to make my home life so much better. Yeah. The way that I can command being a qualified welder is more than what I could dream of at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, being an artist, people don't pay you to be an artist unless you're a tape uh, uh, displaying in the tape or um, a Turner Prize winner or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to win the Turner Prize. Um, well, I might do, but um, mm -hmm. it's unlikely because um, I don't do mainstream stuff. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. But it sounds like you've got, I know it's a, it's a brand new chapter and lots of unknowns, but it sounds like you've got the right attributes to make it work. And you well, we shall the see. Skills, you know, the, the general skills as well and the creativity. Yeah. It's, yeah, I think the learning, going back to school, learning again at nearly 40, um, that's the challenge. Yeah. If I'm honest, I was never a good student. <laughs> I, I went to university to get away from my parents. Um, and the fact I was doing an art course was just because that was the only thing I was any good at at school. Mm. And I had to go to university. So, or, so I was told anyway. Um, so getting to do this now. <laughs> much better yeah. an actual direction an actual trade profession something that's worth the paper that it's that i'm paying for yeah yeah, yeah. well um steve twydell says it's hard to do when you have family responsibilities well done andy proud of you mate community is always here to support you through it so um yeah appreciate it I'm sure you'll get loads of support from the maker community as well yeah, yeah. They, they already are. Yeah. They're brilliant. Yeah. So I mean, um, just tell us where we can find you online, Well, uh, where everyone can find you. Um, just right here. Um, <laughs> uh, AH Bespoke on Instagram and the YouTubes. Okay. Um, all the same, um, even on Facebook as well. Yeah. I don't do Twitter or anything like that or the other bits and bobs. I'm not interested in those. Yeah. Right. Okay. But you're busy on Instagram. Instagram will be yeah. where you yeah. follow me nine times out of ten. Cool. Um, YouTube, little bell, then you'll know when I upload. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so everybody, if you're not already subscribed to Andy on YouTube, please go and find ah bespoke and subscribe. subscribe and click the bell so you get notified yeah, so you'll be able to see all his new stuff as it comes and follow him on um, instagram as well well it's been an absolute pleasure having you on our podcast today we've loved chatting with you they're most awesome yeah and finding out a lot about you so thank you thank for you joining both. us yeah cheers no, thank you for having me yeah no <laughs> thank you very much and best of luck with the uh, the course and uh, send our love and best wishes to the wife and your two sons and uh, yeah keep on turning and stay Viking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll look out for all the stuff you'll be doing as you Brilliant. do the course. Yes, we'll be following you with interest. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you're very Brilliant. welcome to stay with us. We're going to just chat about our week and whatnot now, but um if you like to hang around and just sure sure i'll hang around all right cool lovely thank you, thank very, you very much, much andy
That's cool. Thanks, guys. Cheers.